Hey everyone, my name is Riley, and in this video, we will be taking a look at Notion versus Asana. Both of these tools are awesome project managers. However, both of these tools, Notion and Asana, have some very different features, and both tools have their own sets of pros and cons. I will take you into both tools. We will do a side-by-side -side comparison, taking a look at the pricing, the features, the pros and cons of both tools, so that you can walk away from this video knowing exactly which tool is best for you. The first thing that we are going to talk about when comparing Notion and Asana is going to be the price of both of these tools. First of all, they both have fantastic free plans. So you can get started and you can try out both of these tools for free on the free plan right here and the free plan right here. And then if you do want to upgrade, then the plus plan is very similarly priced. Like for both of these basic plans right here, plus on Notion is $12 per month. And then the starter on Asana is £10 per month, which is going to be close to $12 per month. Whereas with the business and the advanced, Asana is more expensive here. So with Notion, we pay $18 per month for the business, whereas Asana is £21 per month, which is probably going to be close to $25. So keep that in mind, the basic plans are going to be around the same price, but the more expensive, the business plans, Asana is going to be slightly more expensive. With that being said, let's now take a look at both of these tools and the features that they have. So the main difference I would say between Notion and Asana is if you are just looking for a project management tool, go for Asana. It is overall better, I would say, as a project manager. However, if you are looking for a software where we can have a project manager and then we can stack multiple tools on top, like in Notion, we can have a project manager, we can have a CRM, we can have like a hiring section, then Notion is going to be the best tool. The best way to view this is Asana is like the master of one and that one is being a project manager and the Notion is like a jack of all trades. Let's first of all take a look at the project management section of both of these tools and how they compare. Let's start out with Asana right here. And to create a new project, we go down to projects at the side. We can open this up and create a new project. In here, we can choose from a template or we can start with a blank project. So just to go over and show you some of these templates. In here, we can get bug tracking templates. We can get meeting templates. We can get customer feedback templates. And those are all the templates right there. But I'm going to go back and let's start this project from blank. So we can come in here on Asana and we can create a project name. So I'm just going to call this GeForce North. And then we can choose the default view. So this is the list view right here. We then have a board view that's going to look like this. We then have the Gantz chart is actually locked off. You have to upgrade for this. And then we have the calendar view right here. Let's start out with a board as this is what people are usually using when creating a project manager. So we can click on create project and in here we can now customize these sections to be the sections that we want. So we have to do, we have in progress and we have complete and I don't want to make this overly complicated. So I'm just going to add one more section and we can say this is under review, just like that. So we now have all of these sections created. I actually want to grab under review and drag this back before complete. And we now have the premise of this board set up. Now in Notion, this is going to be slightly different because what we create in Notion are pages. So if we just go to create a page, this basically brings up like a document and the way that we would go through if we were going to create this from scratch is we have to enter in a command and then we basically build out the entire thing ourselves. That's if we were starting it from scratch though. There are easier ways to do this on Notion. The best way to do this is we just want to go to templates and then we can see all of the different templates that we can get. So this is what I was talking about earlier with Notion where we can get project managers, we can get CRMs. So we could get a CRM right here. We can get all of these different tools. But for now, let's just create a simple project manager. The easiest way to do this is to actually grab a to-do list right here. So this is one downside I would say to Notion. It's definitely not as intuitive. If you didn't have this video and you didn't have me telling you like this is here, this is there, then with Asana, it's pretty straightforward. We just create a project, enter that in, and we are brought up to a project manager. Whereas with Notion, we have to create a to-do list. If you weren't watching this video, you probably wouldn't have any idea that this is how we can create a project manager. But either way, we go into the to-do list right here. Then we can go over to board. And as you can see, it starts to take the shape of a project manager. So in here, we have not started in progress and done. So I want to make these the same as Asana. 
And once again, this shows where Asana is easier. If I want to change any of these top sections, I can just click in and rename this to whatever I like. Whereas in Notion, it doesn't let me do this. The way that we do this in Notion is we have to change the status within the table. So we can go back to all tasks, click into the status section right here, and then edit the property. And this is where we can change them. So if I click into get started, let's change this to to do. Then we have in progress. I'm going to add another one here and say under review. And then we might also click in and change this color to like a purple so it's easier to distinguish. Now we have that set up, we can go back to the board and just like that, nice. We now have a project manager and within reason, these look relatively the same. We have to do in progress, under review and complete, to do under review. So these are the wrong way around. Once again, not as easy to fix. In Asana, we can just drag and drop these around. Whereas in Notion, we have to go back to all tasks, click into the status, edit property, and then we can drag them around in this area. Now we have this set up, to do in progress under review done. Let's clear out the tasks that we currently have. So these default tasks that we are given in both of these software. So let's just delete these so we have everything blank. And then we will talk about how it looks to add new tasks into both of these tools. Let's start out with Asana. Let's go to to-do and we can add a task right here. And then for the task name, let's call this Asana versus Notion. So this is a task to create this video that I am creating right now. Once we type this in inside of Asana, we have two different columns that we can add at the bottom. First of all is we can assign a task. So I don't have any other teammates in here, but if I did, I could enter them in. To add teammates, we just click on add. We can then type in their email and we can send an invitation to add them to the board. If we have them on the board, we just select them and then we can assign that specific task to that person. We can also go ahead and add a due date for this. So Asana versus Notion, I'm going to add a due date and I'm going to say this is due today. And just like that, we now have that set up. Let's do the same inside of Notion. So we can go to to do and add a new task. And let's call this once again, Asana versus Notion. Once we have entered that in, the only column it's going to offer us along the bottom is to add an assignee. So once again, we can click in. If we want to add somebody to this task, then we can do it right here. And you can already see it's easier to add people in Asana. So in Asana, if I want to assign somebody and I don't have anybody on the team, I can invite them via email right here. However, with Notion, it's once again, just not as intuitive. If I want to add a team member into my Notion team, what I have to do is go into settings and members on this left-hand side. Then we can go to people, add members, and then we can add them with their email right here. So it's not too complicated. It's still relatively easy to do. It's just a little bit easier on Asana. I just realized that we spelled that wrong as well. So let's clear that up. So we now have a basic summary of these tasks added in. But let's see what we can do with both of these tools if we click in. So we click in in Asana. And in here, we can once again add an assignee. Down here, we can add a description of this. So let's just say record and upload Asana versus Notion comparison, just like that. I'm then going to copy and paste this because I'll do the same thing for Notion. So we can add the description in there. And then what we can also do is add in some subtasks. So especially if I am using these tools with a team, subtasks are going to be very, very important because I can break this task down into small subtasks and show my team exactly what I want them to do. So we can go in add subtasks and I can say research both tools. Then I can say spend four hours using each tool. Then we can say script video, record video, edit video and upload video just like that. So now we have the subtasks added. Our team members can come in, they can see these subtasks that we have and they can start checking them off. So this is now in to do, but I can move this into in progress and that's going to be moved right there. And then I can come in and start checking off all of these different tasks. Let's take a look at how this looks inside of Notion. So we click on this to open this up. And in here, this is where we can actually set a due date. So if you remember when we created the task, all we can do is add an assignee. To add a due date, we click in and then we can add the due date right here. So let's add this as today. We can then add different properties. So down here, we can add in all of these different sections. We can add in a URL, files and media if we want to connect anything to this. 
However, there's no section right here to immediately go in and start adding subtasks. So once again, we need to do this ourselves. You're probably starting to see now that because Asana is just being built as a project manager, it instantly has available and tells you, here are the tools that you need to use, use them. Whereas with Notion, you already need to know what you are doing before you come in here. Otherwise, it's very limited. Like, because I know what I am doing with this tool, with Notion, well, I can come in here, I can hit this slash key, and I can tell it that I want a to-do list. In here, I can now go ahead and start adding in these subtasks. So these probably aren't the same, but I'm going to say script video, record video. You get the idea. We can add the subtasks in right there. So with that said, that is how we can create the boards and that's how we can add tasks in here to move around in the project manager. Now let's take a look at the other views that we can get with both of these tools. Now Asana does offer all of these different views. However, they are going to be locked behind a paywall and you can't access most of them until you upgrade your plan. So we can get access to the board, of course. We can also get access to the list. So this is the same information, just laid out in a different way. We have to do in progress under review, and then we have the task. But things like a Gantt, we have to upgrade for this. The dashboard view, we have to upgrade for this. The calendar view, we can get access to, which is pretty nice. So in here, we can see all of the tasks that we have and the day that they are due. So because this was due today, it's going to show up under Friday the 5th. If I go ahead and create a new task right here, and let's just set this to test. And I set this to Monday. If I click out and go back to the calendar, we can see that that is going to be scheduled right there for Monday. So the calendar view you can get on this free plan. Then overview is not so much a view. It's kind of where we can add a product description. We can choose the project roles for the members that we have. We then have workflow, which is once again, locked behind one of these paywalls. We have messages where we can see all of the messages between our team on this project and then files where we can upload any files that we want to pertaining to this task. Notion, on the other hand, it has less views, but it allows you to do all of them for free. So if I go up to this plus icon, we can see a timeline view right here. So I can see this is due on the 5th. If I was to go back in and let's just add one more task and let's say once again, test and say that this is due on Monday. So we can click in, do Monday. And if we go back, we can see test is on the 8th. So this is the timeline view. Once again, we of course have the calendar view. So in here, it's just a, a standard calendar. We can see all of the tasks and the dates that they are due. And then we can see by assignee. So I don't have anybody assigned to these tasks, but it's basically going to create different sections. So this would say like Riley and then all of Riley's tasks and then Charlotte and then show you all of Charlotte's tasks. And then the final view is mine. And this is where you can see all tasks that have been assigned to you. So with that said, that is the task management portion of both of these tools. And as Asana is just a project manager, we can't really do much more beyond this. Whereas Notion can, because in Notion, we can create so many different things. If I go to templates and we pull up a CRM right here, I just grab a sales CRM. This is going to be added in. And then once again, we can go to all of these different sections. I can change what these are called. We can add in new leads right here. We can change existing leads. We can go in and edit. And we literally have, it's not the best CRM in the world by any stretch of the imagination. It doesn't even compare to CRM tools like HubSpot. But if you just need a basic CRM, this is fantastic because you can have a project manager. You can have a CRM. You can create a bunch of other things. So we can create like social media calendars. We can create design portfolios. We can create pitch decks all inside of Notion. So we can go for the template right here. We can click on get template. And this is the downsides to Notion as well. So the final thing I will say on this is yes, we can do a lot on Notion, but as a beginner, you are going to be so heavily relying on these templates because it's very difficult to build things yourself. Like this CRM right here, if you're fine getting it from this template and you can use this and just edit it as it is. So we can go in, we can delete these leads right here. If I want to add a new lead, I can just enter the information, but actually trying to build this thing myself, like where everything is, it will be very, very hard. And as a beginner, you won't be able to do this. So if you are happy relying on templates, even to get something like a project manager, Notion is awesome. Like I cannot praise Notion enough because of the amount of things that you can do with this tool. However, if you don't want to be relying on templates, it's going to take a long time to actually learn how to build these things yourself. So that is what I would say about these two tools. If you want a project manager that is very easy to use, go with Asana, it's fantastic. 
If you want a project manager that maybe isn't quite as good as Asana, but you can get all of these other tools alongside it, and you don't mind the steeper learning curve, then go with Notion because it is absolutely awesome. So both of these tools are awesome in different ways. It really just depends on what you are looking for. So that is my comparison of Notion versus Asana. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.